Musicians in my yard with butterflies flying around. Roland, how you doing? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. Tell us yeah. about your stuff. My stuff. Well, you know, we're in the middle of COVID, so there's not a lot of stuff going around. Yeah, but you got a lot of stuff. Well, I did a couple of uh, collaboration videos, one for NIB yes. and one for Metal on Metal. So that was pretty good. You know, I'm stuck in my, you know, I'm not working. I'm stuck in my house 24-7. I needed something to do, right? So I just figured, you know what, man, let's, uh, let's try to get some of my friends involved. Let's do some recording. I brought out this uh, a little Boss uh, digital recorder and had to blow the dust off it, eh? Because I bought it years ago but never used it and blew the dust off and let's see how this <laughs> thing works now, you know? And let's get it going and I start doing a little bit of recording. And when you do it by yourself, it's kind of boring. You need someone to, sure. you know, jam with. And, and I like jamming. And I like jamming more so I like recording, right? And it just, I, I was, you know, in the back of my mind, I was seeing like stars and hearing aid. I'm like, man, I wish I could do something like that. And then recently I saw a video, uh, We Rock by Metal Agents. And uh, we, you guys can see it, so check it out on YouTube, it's awesome. And I'm like, no, I can do something like that. I want to get on my buddies, people that I know in the scene, get to play some guitar solos, get to do some vocals, and uh, you know, and just jam it out. And, sure. Yeah, and, and it takes a lot of my time, you know, so it gives me something to do. So your collaboration, you hooked up with everybody that you've been playing with over there. Pretty much, pretty much, or even if I haven't played with them, but I admired them. Oh, cool. And I've seen them live, and people that I admired, Very uh, this Josh Gordon, like, he, I really admired his playing. He's such a, a tasteful player, and I Josh admired his in playing. The, in the uh, Bob Seger tribute. Yes, yeah. And, and his own band with his wife. Yes, that too, you know. So I have never Josh played with them, but I've seen them play, and, and we became friends, and That's we talked guitar, and I really admire him, and a few others, Nathan Smith, you know, he's a young guy coming up, I admire his playing, he's good too, and we don't really play together, he comes to the jam a lot, that's uh, the rock power jam that we have, so that was a good way to meet him, and his dad plays drums, so his dad, Rick, did the last collaboration of drums, right? Metal on Metal, so that's uh, Rick there. Is that how it starts with the drum track sort of thing? Yes, and that's, uh, yeah, uh, Rick starts it all off, and he's got like a five a five microphone setup, so I get like Great. overheads and bass yeah. and drums, so we get to mix that down. Sounds good. I do guitars, I get a bass player, and uh, yeah, I'm not glad I got, I didn't play bass, I, I got real bass players to play bass. I think I really like that. It gets the feel of like a real bass player playing. And who've been, who've been doing your vocals? So vocals, it's a collaboration. So, you know, everybody. Oh. <laughs> you know, there's like, I don't know, eight vocals in the first oh, one, awesome. another eight, another group of eight in the second one. And yeah, so there's like Deborah Ruda, you know, from Madame. She did a couple of lines and Jerry and uh, uh, Steve Grizz and Maxwell Black, you know, everyone. Everyone that I admired. Everyone that I totally admired. Like I've seen on the scene and these are some of my favorite singers in the scene, you know. So you're just reaching out. And just reaching out. Just reaching out. People that I know and just reaching out. And these are people that I admire in the scene. I really, truly admire these people. Yeah. Tell us about your bands. My bands. Ugh. Let's see. We're Catalyst. You know, this is uh, who I do top 40 rock and roll with, classic rock with. I have Iron Priest. Obviously, a uh, tribute to Iron Maiden and Judas Priest. And the Ozzy Experience. Uh, doing a tribute to Ozzy Osbourne and Black Sabbath. So those are my three main ones. Who's in the bands? Yeah, so Catalyst, you know, Al Riley's Catalyst. We got Al Riley there. And we got Chris Hume from Floyd Factor, myself. And we got uh, Neil Mellers, who plays drums for everybody. Mm -hmm, yeah. Iron Priest, we got uh, Jerry Schreinhardt. He's in a band called Entropy, one of uh, Canada's foremost heavy metal bands. Uh, if you get a chance to see them live, go check them out. Cool. Uh, they're coming out with an EP soon. I can't wait to hear it. Uh, Troy Ellis, a lot of people in Toronto, West End knows Troy. Uh, who else we have in uh, Iron Priest? Uh, Danny Russell. He's been around in the metal scene for a while. The Aussie Experience, we'll have the vocalist from Strictly Sabbath, Steve Grizz. And we have Les Wheeler on bass. He's in the Hamilton scene. You might know him from Saracen or. Uh... So obviously your influences are in metal. Why don't you tell us about your. Yeah, well, not just metal, early classic rock, psychedelic and uh, classic rock and metal. Uh, I, won't be, uh, I won't deny that. And yeah, man, you know, guitar-wise, you know, Jimi Hendrix, obviously, Jimmy Page, 
uh, Eric Clapton, Metal War, Metal Wise, uh, Ingve Momstein, Randy Rhodes, one of my favorites. You're a uh, shredder. Uh, you know what? I don't like to call myself a shredder just because I like playing different styles and I like yeah. blues, I like Stevie Ray Vaughan. But uh, if that's labeled, it's going to be thrust upon me. Sure, I'm not going to deny it. I'm not going to accept it, but I'm not going to deny it as well, right? So you're in an even more metallic band. <clears throat> more metallic bands. Uh, back in the day... Weren't you in Slayered for a while? Slayered, yes. Yeah, we just uh, recently broke up. Oh. And uh, so, yeah, but yeah, I was in Slayered. Sorry, I can yeah. cut that in. No, 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 leave it in, leave it in. That's All right. Good. Yeah, yeah, Gord's yeah. a cool guy. Yeah, yeah, Gord was, yeah with Gord and... Uh, and Tim Smith and uh, Fareed and uh, yeah Fareed's known in the metal scene in the downtown Toronto metal scene he plays drums wicked one of the best drummers I've ever played with huh. yeah so uh, invite him yeah. to my show yeah I'll do that yeah yeah he's a great drummer so yeah so this layer and you know so that's your influence that's my influence 80s and, metal and, 70s uh, classic rock tell us how you started though then like what's your first guitar and stuff like that first guitar First guitar, oddly enough, a friend, uh, I, I bought it off a friend for 20 bucks. It was a Gibson, <laughs> a Gibson Les Paul body with a Fender Strat neck, a bolt-on Fender Strat neck. So needless to say, that was a crappy-ass guitar, but, you know, I was into uh, Led Zeppelin. I guess Led Zeppelin and, and Hendrix at the time, a young little red rat. And, uh, and then from there, I just progressed to, like, Ozzy Osbourne, Black Sabbath, Rush. I was a major fan of Rush. Uh, and then the 80s came, and there's shred guitar in the 80s, so uh, Momstein and Vinnie Moore and Tony McAlpine, and then the shred metal, so like, you know, Metallica, Testament, Megadeth, you know. Pretty on. Shit like that. Yeah, yeah, so, my yeah, opinion is, it's wide, it's varied, I like a lot of stuff, I really do. Who else have you uh, enjoyed playing with over the years, and, uh, and where? And where? Let's see, I'm going to say... Some of my favorites, playing wise, I love playing with Blizzard of Oz, which you know was my Aussie thing I did for about ten years, and uh, we had some big shows there. I really love playing that. All right, it's Catalyst. I like playing. You know what? I'm gonna say Just Janice. I did it with the wife. Yeah. And uh, it was great for me to play some bluesy licks. I love really playing some bluesy licks, and it had a way of me not being on ten all the time. I could be down to like nine or or something like that, or. Or six. I get to turn down a little bit and play a little clean and blues. And now that you mention her, tell us about how that uh, worked as a as a couple playing tunes together for so long. I loved it. I loved it, man. We did it for like ten years together, and I freaking love that. We talk, you know. We lived music. We talked music. We went to bed music. We woke up together music. And uh, did you meet on, on the scene? Or? And we met on the scene. Right on. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, we uh, very romantic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Long, long time ago, I was invited to join a band, and, and she was there, and we just kind of met, trying to start a band together. That band didn't work out at all, but I kind of just grabbed her, or she grabbed me, she started another one, let's start a Maiden Tribute. And oh, yeah. That was one of my favorites, doing a Maiden Tribute with her, Power Slaves. Oh, great. Yeah, that was uh, the previous Maiden Tribute, and I loved doing that with her, that was awesome. And uh, you got to play with Abby too, Abby and uh, Abby Way. Marty, Abby Way and Marty, yeah. So, and that was one of my favorite bands to play in. It was all Maiden, and we played some big places, some big shows. We played, we uh, had a couple full shows at the the new old Rock and Roll Heavens there on the corner and oh, yeah. the Hardball. Yeah, I had some big shows there. Where's your favorite place to play in Toronto? Right now, my favorite place to play is definitely the Rock Pile. I, I love playing there. It's got a nice stage, great sound. The, the sound guy there, Jake, Jake. Is great, one of the best sound men in all of Toronto, or all of Canada, really. Uh -huh. You know, and just a nice, comfortable sized room. It's not too big, but not too small either. And hey, stage. He's been around as well, not just Canada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's done the international tour. No with limit. Them. Yeah. Um, Michael Schenker, you know, on tour with Michael Schenker there. And Crip Topsy. Yeah. 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 So you, uh, you're good friends, obviously. Yeah, yeah, I guess they were good friends. And, and uh, with the management of Rock Pile, etc. Yeah, yeah. And we, we wish you good luck over there at Rock Pile. Yeah, yeah, you know, I'm doing another collaboration. Um, I'm not going to tell you what it is, but the next one's going to be dedicated to the Rock Pile. And uh, hopefully it will be back. And as far as we know, it will be back. And, uh, you know, if you know Dom, it's, it's his life. It's his life. So even the Rock Pile at Dundas, 
doesn't come back, another rock pile though. I can guarantee you that. For sure. And uh, yeah, good luck to you, Dom. We want you back. You know. Did you play at the East End one? And we played at the East End one once. Yeah. We played at the the East old End Nobby. One. They ripped that down. Huh? Yeah. What is it now? I don't know. It's just been maybe going to a some kind of store. Yeah. Always ends up being a store. Yeah. It's a, it's a good corner for a store. Right. <laughs> So, what else is up with you? Are you got any future plans coming up? So, future plans, you know, like I said, I got another collaboration coming yeah, up within a week or so. Technology, for the most part, was kind of simple, yeah, yeah. but it can get a little difficult if, if someone doesn't have what we need. It's pretty simple, as long as you have a, a half-decent digital recorder for guitar players, or you do uh, computer recording. It doesn't have to be super high-tech, okay. you know, as long as you got a line into your computer, um, I know a lot of people are using Audacity to record their guitar parts. Oh, yeah. No, that's free. Oh, okay. You know, and so that, that was easy, you know. Like, here's a guitar solo section. I would send them that. The MP3s, they'd send me back their isolated guitars. Vocals, simple, you know. Some, a couple did theirs on their uh, iPad, getting vocals to the iPad. And that was, I was surprised how well that came out. I was really shocked to be actually, to be quite honest. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Nowadays, like the people the recording on their iPads, vocals, yeah. and they sent it to me. Smartphones and things are just great, right? Yeah, now, so. and they really are good. I, awesome. was, I was really shocked at how good the quality came out with those, how, you know, and uh, yeah. And then some people went to the studio and actually got their guitar work or vocal work done in the studio. Yeah. I admired that. I was, I applaud you guys for doing that, you know, and uh, And yeah. uh, what's, is there any funding? Like, are you getting donations? No, no donations, no fun. It's just, just for me. People doing it for the fun of it. Just for, and that's what music is about, man. It shouldn't be about money or funding or this that. And you know, as a musician, we do need to live and eat and feed our bellies and stuff, you know, put gas in the car. But on the same token, it should be like something that you want to do for fun and you just love it and you enjoy it and it's a part of you. It's, yeah. You know, it's... Without it, you were probably dead, right? Well, so. I think doing it for a cause is a great idea, you know. If you yeah, get, doing it for a cause. Get a 50-50 thing going, some to the musicians and some to the COVID relief. Yeah, and that's true. The, the only issue, though, these these uh, songs I'm, re I'm doing, though, they're, uh, they're copyrighted material. Oh, that's true. That's right? True. So I can't monetize that. So, uh, especially with YouTube, they totally demonetize anything that's copyrighted. Yeah. So I can't make money. So it's okay. You know, okay. I admire the songs, you know. There's my tribute to these songs. So the songs that you hear are the songs that I loved growing up, and I love them now to this day. I did a, I premiered it live, but I actually wasn't there. I was actually passed out sleeping. You know, <laughs> these things, at the last day, final day, takes a lot out of you. Sure. I did it all night. Okay, I have to get this ready. And so it's the final touches that take a lot of time and like okay this one's not lip sync i gotta correct this or well same with these right they're 20 minutes on the air but we've tried a couple of times we've right yeah a couple of extra messages and you see some little things forth. yeah you see some little things you have to fix it so you're up, all yeah, night. Good, you're up all night trying to get get ready for the premiere yeah and then so at the time you're just you're just tired and burnt out and passed out i passed out for the last one so uh, people just woke up and <laughs> i got all these comments and everything and then i was like oh cool future plans is maybe more of those as long yeah. as we're locked out as long as we're locked out there'll be more of those and it may be even afterwards i had so much fun doing them and yeah. i'm pretty sure as i continue my playing i think that would be a great way for you guys to get a concert going all the covid uh, all the covid co-op musicians all in one room at the same time would be awesome that would be awesome <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome that maybe we could do it at the rock pile where there's lots of yeah. space and stage room or something get all the cool whenever people. we're not locked down again yeah yeah i, I can't wait till that happens i just get that way i want to get back out there and play and for sure yeah well you've yeah. been all over the scene and not just uh you know west end not just east end but uh tell us about some of the crazy places you've been oh you know you know Starting i started it with my original band in the 90s so you know i went on tour with that so we played ramuski and and uh Victoriaville and Sherbrooke and Montreal. Even recently, played in Montreal. Um, I was with Motorhead for a couple of years there, and played Ottawa and uh, and Montreal and other places again. Quebec City. Motorhead. Uh, Motorhead. With yes. Nick. With Nick. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. a great band. Yeah, totally. Not one of the loudest bands, I'm proud to say. So, uh, yeah, uh, Blizzard of Oz. We played, you know, I don't know where, all over, all over Southern Ontario. Tell us all about over. a crazy road trip. A crazy road trip. Yeah, you know, 
when I go on these road trips, I'm usually the guy who's driving. <laughs> so you're not gonna tell us anything. So, no, I, I got a story. It won't, it won't be anything to do with booze or alcohol related, okay, because you know right. I'm a driver and I have to be responsible for the, cool, the members man. of my band. So I don't drink or or you know partake of drugs during the weekends. Even though I will drink at, at the show, I don't try not to go overboard or whatever. And especially when I'm driving and responsible for musicians and equipment and stuff. Yeah. But uh, one time, there's one crazy story. We played up in Sudbury, the Colson. The Colson. The Colson Sudbury. This was probably early 2000, and I went there with Fish, oddly enough, me and Fish and uh, some other guys. That so 70s band, understand. that 70s band, and uh, we played up the Colson for three days, and uh, we were on our way back, and we were loading the van to come back. The singer goes, "You know what? Give me the keys. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna unlock the van and uh, start loading the equipment." So I gave him the keys. You know, he opens the van, we start loading in the equipment, blah, 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 blah. And uh, our drummer came up with his own car. And so the singer decides to go with the drummer's car, to come back, and he took the keys with him for the van. <laughs> and at that time, you know, there was no cell phone service up in Sudbury at that time. So we couldn't call him and, you know, they come back with the Turn keys. Around. So they took off, the road, they had the keys, and we were stuck in Sudbury with no keys to the van with all the equipment. We had to like break off the, uh, the ignition and stuck the screwdriver and hot wire the uh, the van, and it was a rental van too. So we hot wired this rental van and and uh, yeah, <laughs> and, yeah <laughs> and we got hot wired it and we brought it back to Toronto. And then I gave it back. I didn't say anything, and I just gave it. And they didn't notice. I was never charged for it or anything. They didn't notice. So I just took a hot wired van, mm-hmm. brought it back to the rental company, and just left it. And, uh, that was that. <laughs> so yeah, I had to hot wire our own van. Come back to Toronto. Great story. Yeah, yeah. I hope you're not liable for that, having uh, confessed. That's a great one. Where was like your your biggest crowd? Let's say. My biggest crowd. That is a tough one. I think Blizzard of Oz. We played this lottery gig at an arena. I think it was Chelmsford, a little bit north of Sudbury. And this arena was packed full. We did it with Hell's Bells. I know it was easy, close to like a thousand people, twelve hundred people. There. It was so like Black Sabbath pack. and ACDC. Yeah. And where was this again? Yeah, Chelmsford. Chelmsford. It was something that was sponsored by uh, the lottery, Lot- Lotto Canada or yeah. Lotto. Yeah, Lotto Canada. And it was a big all-day festival with bands and uh, and other activities and stuff. Huge fest. Huh? Huge fest. That's yeah, yeah. And, uh, so that was probably most. That was fun. fun. That was, yeah, that was fun. It was like a big, huge crowd. That was great. Uh, Sab Stock was another great uh, crowd there. I love playing Sab Stock. You know, uh, Sab Stock? What's that about? Sab Stock was a, uh, a festival, lots of bands on this guy. Uh, oh, it's a good show, you know. We did it with uh, a Pink Floyd tribute, and there was a few other tributes. Chris's? No, not Chris's. Oh, okay. Another one. Uh, Darkest Side of the Moon, that's how I met those guys. Oh, yeah. And uh, there's another good Pink Floyd tribute, yeah. like those guys, Mark McClay. And. Uh, yeah, that's, cool. that's a good show. Good show. That big stage, a big huge stage. Lots of people. People raising their hands in the air. You might see some video on YouTube. Search Blizzard of Oz, Sabstock. You might see some video. Sabstock. Yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah. We did some. That was a good show for us. That was a very good show. People loved it. And cheered us on. And, so then, future plans after COVID, when uh, you know you're going to be putting out any music, something like that. So you know what? This whole experience of doing the collaboration kind of got me back into like maybe recording, doing original music. I've gotten used to using the recorder now, and, and I kind of have some ideas in my mind. And uh, So I think after this, I might start doing some uh, original music. I've done it in the past, you know, in the 90s. I, I was actually signed to two different record labels. Oh, yeah? Uh, Metal scenes, yeah. One was Dwell, Witch Hunt, Dwell Records, Witch Hunt. And Dwell actually owned uh, a record label that had Chad Atkins on it, so that was my thing. Cool. Like, been on the same record label with Chet Atkins, and so I did that for for a year or two. Didn't like the band. Started my own band. I quit the band, and there was some like, well, "What are you gonna do?" I'm like, listen, man, I got signed once. I'll watch me. I'll get signed again. And sure enough, six months later, I got signed again. And I'm on high records, you know. But by then, what I was just, that about? I was just another uh, record label from Germany. Were uh, you doing metal? Metal, yeah, definitely yeah. metal. Yeah, more extreme metal. But you know what? I, I, by that time, I was on the crossroads, and I just got tired of being poor, and huh. and, uh, and you know, metal was dying at the time, and no oh. one coming to the shows, and 
at that time, I just said, you know, as I signed the the uh, the contract for that second record company, I just kind of like, you know, I, I'm not in it right now. I got to do hmm. something else. Just, my heart was just gone. Just, Would you just get a job at that point? And then, yeah, I just got a job and did some computer studies and went on a different crossroads. But you know what? You could take the guitar out of the guy. You can't take the guy out of the guitar. You yeah. know what I mean? And, uh, oh, we talked a little bit about gear. We're AV guys from the old days. So yeah. You, you, know, you want to do some gear dab for the gear heads out there? What are you using? Like, do you use Black Sabbath gear for Black Sabbath? You used to have a Zach Wilde guitar. So. Yeah, yeah, it, was, it wasn't a real Zach Wilde guitar. It was my, but you know, close enough. It was a Gibson Les Paul. Uh, I wasn't going to buy the uh, Zach Wilde Les Paul model just because it's so damn expensive and I don't think it's really worth the price just to have this name. So I made my, I took a real Gibson Les Paul studio. I put my own stripes on it. Oh, did you? Uh, cool. Yeah, yeah. So Good it's a, uh, and I, you know. Yeah, that looked awesome. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's red and white, you know. Uh, black has the black and white or whatever, the black and yellow. I figured one, I want mine to be a little bit different just because I'm me. I'm not Zach, you know. So uh, I did the red and white with the real Les Paul. Uh, Marshall Amps, you know, Zach uses uh, Marshall Amps. And it's not so much me trying to emulate Zach. Yeah. It's just Zach and I, we have the same influences. So I was a Marshall guy long before I did uh, the Ozzy tribute. Uh, I've always been a Marshall. Back in my original band days, I played a Marshall. It just matched. Yeah, just matched. I just love Marshalls. I played Charvel guitars for a while and Gibsons and I got a shout out to Gibson's. Zach. One of one of my favorite shows at the Danforth Music Hall lately. Oh yeah, that was wicked. The last show I got to. You did? I got to uh, it was a couple years back, couple years but back. I got to review it and uh, yeah. and uh, I got published. On yeah. That one. Oh, nice, nice. I remember you taking some pictures. We did a show with uh, Crude at the courthouse and oh, that was, that was a, a great good experience. Time. Yeah, yeah. The we had the, the whole like camera. We're doing like camera shots and everything. Yes, I remember was, that. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. And he was, like. Those was like, what, four or five camera guys? You know the history of that place? Yeah, or what? No, not really. It was, used to be a courthouse. That courthouse, was and yeah. in the old, old days, they used to do hang-ins in the backyard. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, wow. wow. Oh. Yeah, I did. That's the first time I heard They probably would have hanged the Black Sabbath band, for sure. They probably would have. <laughs> <laughs> probably would have. <laughs> yeah. Witches, you witches. witches. Yeah, brought up you're the playing the You're playing the tritone. Yeah. <laughs> you know that yeah. used to be yeah, illegal, right? Tritone. Yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> some of the underground guys, they were pretty uh, badass. Yeah, jazz. So, I'm pretty roaring sure underground. 20s. I sense that the Roaring Twenties are coming again, right? Yeah, yeah. And you know what? I, mean, I have a funny suspicion. You mentioned you saying that rock and roll, I think, is going to go towards that. Right? No, rock is dead. And, and for the most part, it is in terms of money and, 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 and show-wise and everything. But you know what? There's going to be a niche market for rock and roll. I asked you a question from the Woodstock movie, which is, why is music the great communicator? You know what it is? Unlike some tribute bands you go see, sometimes you see an artist do a tribute and they got thrust upon it because they look like the artist. And, and they look like this, well, I'm going to do this. People say, I look, and they do it. Others, they get thrust upon it because the money is good. It's not what they're into, but the money is good and they like it and the audience is good and they make their money. Me... There's no one in rock and roll who I look like, obviously, right? There's very few people, you know? So I get the chance to do the music that I love, that I absolutely love. Being a fan of Iron Maiden, Ozzy Osbourne, Slayer, Motorhead, are, are these bands that I love, love, love growing up, and I get to do it. So maybe, you know, maybe that love for what I'm doing comes across. I don't know. It's who you are. And it's who I am. And, uh, and that is that. That, that and not just the metal just the blue side too if I could do a tribute to Stevie Ray Vaughan if I could do a tribute to Jimmy I would love to doing the Janis Joplin tribute I love doing that that was a, again a, a side of me where I get to relax be laid old back old school rock yeah. old school rock you know turn down my volume use my pickup selector switch and not always on 10 and, and I love doing that too the so, whole show. yeah yeah <laughs> you know so it's good and uh uh, hopefully in the future there's a, a theater band I might want to do with a, a bunch of musicians that I've kind of acquired over the past. Um, I was derailed by this COVID thing. Hopefully the theater show might come back after this. Hopefully it does and I can bring this out and again I get to bring this musical side that I don't necessarily get doing the metal all the time where it's always on time, always the aggressiveness. always. And this is great. I love it. But you know, it's other sides to me.
Who we're gonna be. That? We're gonna forget something. You have because... to tell me the the, the the great communicator who said that it was an audience, right? I gotta watch that movie again. And I just watched it like literally like Some six British months. Some British guy asked an audience member the yeah. question. That was really. I can't cool. remember what's that. But okay? it's okay. Like you answer, yeah. you answer in your way, and that's fine. Yeah. Something the Rob Paul Jams. Yeah. Tell yeah. us about how that uh, has evolved. How's that evolved? You know. The rock pile jam started before me, and I'm pretty sure it's gonna go on after me. <laughs> it started with really with Al. He kind of really got it going, and Al had it with uh, a couple of other guitar players for, before me. I went there on a regular basis, and uh, when, the, when the, the opportunity guy. arose, you know, and he needs a guitar player, we're only gonna join the band. Sure, why not? Why wouldn't I? So I've been with Al. There's some videos, or there's some is that memories. when you started with Catalyst through the rock pile jam? Not long before that. Okay. Long before. I was with Catalyst. I, I, I'd go to their shows. they come for like 11, oh, yeah. 12 years. And they'd go to our shows. They would come see us play. We would go see them play. So there's always this mutual love for each other's bands that we've had over the years. And, and when the opportunity arose for me to join the band, I jumped at the chance, no problem. And, you know, we've tried to make the, the, the Rock Power Jam work. Um, one of the things that happened at the Rock Pile Jam is like a lot of times people would come up and hey, do you know any Maiden? And I'd be first in line. Yeah, I know some Maiden. Or do you know Metallica? <laughs> yes, I know Metallica. And uh, just do it. But unfortunately, I gotta go soon. Unfortunately, a lot of the uh, bands, a lot of the members, you know, uh, uh, they didn't know Metallica per se. They know the Maiden songs per se. Yeah. So I went to Dom. Uh, me and James both went to Dom. Dom, let's do a heavy metal jam. Let's do this every other week. It started out once a month, but it got pretty popular. We the went Thursday every ones. week. Thursdays, right? Oh, now it's yeah. like every other week. And let's do a metal jam for the people who want to do Metallica, who wants to do Black that's Sabbath. Right, that's the and one you Maiden. did in the East End. As and, well. uh, and we did a little bit for the East End, not too much. We did a couple. Yeah, we played there with Ozzy, and we did a couple of heavy metal jams yeah, there. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, the new kind of club. Yeah, you know, East End. when a room opens up, you got to just tell everybody, get your, get your ass in you there and do a game. Well, you know what? Uh, my time's got to go soon. I got to go. But if there's one word I can leave with people, it's yeah. like, you know what? Guys, the scene is going to open up soon. It's going to be a few months, but it's going to start locally a little bit. When these local bands are playing, get out there. And there might be 50% capacity at first. Get out there. 50% is not a lot of people. Get out there. Support your bands. Uh, take precautions, wear your mask, do what you need to do, stay six feet apart. But uh, go support the bands. We're, we really need your help. And if you want to see rock and roll and heavy music stay alive, we need your support. That's that's what we need. How do we get you online? How do we get me online? Facebook. Just look for Rolling Rocks on Facebook. Two X's. Two X's. Rolling Rocks. R O X X on Facebook. Rocks, one X. Yeah. <laughs> Toronto Rocks, one X. Rolling Rocks, two X's. Yes, and let's look for Al Riley's Catalyst or uh, the Ozzy Experience. The Ozzy Iron, Experience. Or the Iron Priests, any one of those three bands, and you'll find me. Slayer, uh, one of those bands, and you, I'll be there. You can search me, I'll be there. And, yeah. And you can follow me that way. That's yeah. great. I don't do Instagram or Pinterest or all those other ones. I'm basically just uh, Facebook and YouTube and Facebook. That's all. YouTube. Yeah. You got a YouTube channel? Yeah. Is that yeah. under your name? I think it's under Killer Guitarist, right? But look for those uh, COVID videos. Yeah. You know, look for NIB or Metal on Metal, and uh, you'll just see my name up there. I think it's Killer Guitarist, and subscribe to that. Uh, I've got lots of subscriptions lately because of those videos. Thanks so. for coming by, doing this on the lawn, man. Oh, no problem, man. Anytime, you know. I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to speak out. My pleasure. I appreciate it. It's been a pleasure. Always. Awesome. Great yeah. to see you, Shred. Love Freddie. <laughs> get to see you play bass once in a while too, man. You once know, in I don't, while. Get, I don't <laughs> get to see you play often, but when I do, man, I really enjoy you playing bass. So I think been, uh, been playing some acoustic right on this grass. Yeah, I've actually seen a little bit of the video with you and Chris, so that was pretty wild. Really, somebody posted a video? Yeah. Oh no. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. All right, musicians in bars getting beer. Rolling rocks. Cheers, everyone. Thanks. <laughs>